Science fiction portals come in all shapes and sizes, and I need to animate one for an upcoming collaboration. So let's take a look at the options and have a go. Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to today's video, where I'll be looking at how we can draw and animate a portal. And I've made this video originally to help with the portal animation collaboration I'm hosting, where a portal has to appear at the start of the video, for a stick figure to fall out of, and then one at the end, for him to escape through. And portals are a sci-fi mechanism that have appeared in films and cartoons for years, as a means to go from one place to another, and it's here that we'll take our inspiration. Portals can appear in any shape and size. Think of the different portals in the 80s film The Time Bandits, or the doors in Monsters Inc. But the most popular style of portal is a circle or oval doorway, which can either see through or has an effect over the event horizon. So I've got some footage here of a few that I take inspiration from today for my entry to the collaboration. So starting with the portal game, which is an obvious one to start with, let's just take a look at this clip. So firstly notice the player uses the gun to create the portal. And you can see through the entry portal, out through the exit portal, into the other room. And then there's just a coloured effect around the edge, with two colours, one showing the entry and one showing the exit. And if we take a slow look at how it's created, you'll see that the player shoots, and when it hits a surface, there's a distortion effect on the wall as the oval gets larger until it's a full size. And in the background there you notice some sparks in the centre around here going slightly outwards. There, for those few frames. And then the edge of the portal here, it has a kind of flame effect, just flickering around the edge so you know it's alive. Okay, if we take a look at the second one, and what I've got here is a clip from Rick and Morty, where Rick and Morty are being chased by other Ricks and Mortys from other dimensions. And what I'd like to show here is the way portals are created. And again you notice he's using the gun to create the portal, and the portal grows larger from a small central point, with some electrical effects, as it appears, and then the portal itself rotates and looks slightly liquid as they go in and out of it. So notice here the wobble as they step through the portal edge. Okay, and next we've got Stargate. And this is the clip from the film version. There's a couple of things to notice. So the way this portal is formed is through the machinery of the Stargate, so there's no gun to start the creation of the portal. The portal is created from the outside in, instead of from the inside out like the first two are. And again, like Rick and Morty, it's a liquidy effect, with an actual whoosh of water coming in and out of the portal as it's created. And then while it's open, it's got a rippling effect. So again, all these portals have some life about them while they're open. And then finally, we've got Doctor Strange. So firstly, you can see how the portal's created. So instead of being created from the inside out or the outside in, it's being created as a circle by the person creating it. And again, it's another example of a portal where you can see through to the other side before you go through. With another effect around the outside as the portal's alive. And a few other portals come to mind, including the TV series Primeval, whose portals led to the past, and Sliders, whose portals led to alternate universes. And finally, the Terminator films, that had machines creating portal type transports to the past. But I've not got time to cover all of these but there's plenty of examples to take your inspiration from. So let's get designing our own. And the easiest way to draw a portal is to draw a simple oval. So I'll do this on a vector layer. So you can just use the geometry tool to create yourself an ellipse or a circle. And there you go, you can say you've got a portal. So you can draw your animation with your character coming out or going into it. And that's fine for simple line style animations. But obviously we can add a bit of colour to that. So let me just start on the new layer. On this new layer I'll draw another oval. And this time, let's add some colour. Just use the fill tool and fill inside. But most likely you'd want to add some animation. And the simplest way to animate it is with the animate tool to change the size of the oval to make it appear and disappear by growing larger and shrinking smaller. 
So let's just add that on another level. So to animate with the animate tool, we need to extend this drawing onto a number of frames. And on the first frame, which is the animate tool, the first thing you need to do is to move the center point to the center of the object, because that's where the object will be scaled to. When we use the scale tool, so change to the scale tool, and then click and drag to resize the oval. And you notice as I reduce the size by clicking and dragging towards the center point, that the global figure at the top left here changes. And you can either click and drag to just that size, or you can click into this box here and just type directly. So I want to start off at 0%, which is not visible. And then perhaps after 12 frames, bring it back to 100%, which is the original size. Then you want it to keep that size for a while. And then here, we want it to reduce. So we add another key. We could do that by pressing the key button that adds a key for all the animatable attributes or you can go straight to the global setting click into the box and press enter which will store that value as a key so then it goes from 100% down to zero so again 12 frames later enter zero so let's just see how that looks good so it enlarges in size and then reduces but this is quite mechanical looking so we could introduce some overshoot so instead of expanding it to 100% we could expand it slightly larger say 110 and then let it fall back to 100% so we could do this very simply on frame number 12 instead of going to 100% we put 110 and then a couple of frames later just put it down to 100 and we take a look at that you see it kind of pops larger and then reduces smaller which looks slightly more natural and again to reduce in size we could do some anticipation for the movement so across this period here the oval stays at 100% which is fine so two frames later we can increase it to 110% so it goes slightly larger and then it reduces down to zero but of course we've cut into the time here so instead of being 12 frames it's now 10 so let's make this two frames longer and then select that key and drag that two frames to the end as well. So it reduces at the same rate that it enlarges over 10 frames. So let's take a look at that. Now of course the speed that the portal increases and decreases is based on your default setting. So if we go into the preferences and then go to animation, the default interpolation for my computer is set for speed in and speed out. Yours could be set something differently to linear or one of the ease in and out options. So you might need to change it. So you might need to bring up the function editor and for the animated column, if you show the scale and you'll see it change from zero here up to 110 and then back to 100. And if you click anywhere in between the key set, if you click anywhere between the keyframes, at the top right here you can see the interpolation set is speed in and speed out. You can change it here to something different, say linear, and then click apply, and the values change linearly. You can do this numerically at the top right here, or you can do it visually using the graph. Another thing you can choose to animate is the colour of the portal, which will help to give it some life over time. So I won't add the animation for the size of the portal here, because the keys could confuse things, but of course you can animate the size as well as the colour. So animating the colour is very simple to do, but not obvious for how to do it. So what I'll do is change the colour alternately from bright red down to an orange colour back to bright red. So to do this, we use the user interface of the palette. So at the top right here you can see there's a key button. So you press the key while you're on the right colour and in the right frame. So that set the colour on frame 1 to be a bright red. So we'll go to another frame and then we'll change the colour down to a yellow colour and then press the key button again. And you'll notice that no keys appear on the X sheet and there's no keys in the function editor for you to change either. You work entirely in the palette UI. And the only way that you know you have keys is by looking at these arrows to the left and right of the key button. With the button being enabled to the left, it shows that you can move to a key to the left. 
So if I press that, the cursor goes to frame 1 where that key is, and then there's a button available to the right, which takes me to frame 13, and you see the colour change at the same time. So you simply add the colour changes like that, so we'll go to 25, another 12 frames later, and we'll change the colour back to red, I'll press the key button, another 12 frames later, and I'll change it back to yellow and press the key button. So if we take a look at that from the beginning, Finally, another way to add some life to your portal is to add some effects. And there's two ways you can do this. One is you can draw them by hand, and the second is you can use the effects engine in OpenTunes. So let's just draw a couple by hand first. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll show the portal getting larger, and I'll add a small electrical effect onto it. And that involves going to each frame and just drawing the effect changing over time. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Okay, so that's another way to add life to your portal. And finally, we can use the effects engine in OpenTunes. So the way we do this is we go to the FX schematic, and if you go to the schematic view, it might be on the stage schematic, but just click the button at the bottom right until you see FX schematic. And you just right click on the column you want to add the effect to, and then choose to add the effect. Now a couple of my favourites you might want to use are the blur effect, to blur out the electrical lines or any shock waves that you've added. And the second one is the glow effect in the light section. So to see how the effect affects the column, just press the I button at the top right of the table here. Then you can double click on the glow and then change any of the values. So a couple more types of effects you might look into are the distortion and the particle effects. So the distortion effects are shown under the distort category and feel free to have a play with them and see what you can come up with. They can be quite tricky to use, there's lots of options for each one, but have a play and see what works for you. And finally the particle effects are shown under render inside the particle category. And some common effects built in for fireworks, smoke, rain, that kind of thing. Or you can just hit the particles button at the top and then change all the settings for the effect that you're after. But again, that could be quite tricky to set up, but it's worth your time to have a go. And finally, I want to mention some egg sheets. If you're using a simple portal once in an animation, you can just draw and animate it in the same project. But if you'll be using it more than once, or if it's a complicated animation, you might want to make it shareable, and the best way to do that is by creating the portal effect in its own scene, and then loading it as a sub-egg sheet in your new scenes. Now these portals have been built in this scene, so what I'll do is, I'll start a brand new scene. And then just go to the load menu to load as a sub X sheet. Now I've changed my menus around, so you probably see this option down here on the left, but it'll still say load as sub X sheet. So you pick your scene, and it'll ask if you want to load or import the scene. Now because the portal scene is in the same project as the scene I'm just starting to animate in, I'll just choose load. But if it's in a separate project, you might choose to import it to bring in a copy of that scene to the current project, so you can edit independently from the original location. Now I've talked about this more in other videos, so if you're interested in importing to sub sheets and you need more detail, take a look around my channel. So we'll just load that. Okay, so here's all the frames from the original scene, and if I play that through, you'll just see the animation that's running there. So what you can choose to do is add your new level and animate around it. So that's drawing and animating portals. And if you've already made most of your collaboration, consider revisiting your portal and adding some sparkle. And that's exactly what I'll be doing next. So I'll be back tomorrow to show you an update of which portal style I've chosen to use. And that's a guarantee.